Anchovy, welcome to my channel. So today, by popular request on my Instagram, I'm going to show you a behind the scenes from start to finish how I shoot one of my flower of the month photographs. So today, we're going to shoot May's flower of the month, which is the lily. It's such a pretty flower. It's one of my favorites. It just always reminds me of springtime and I am just excited to show you guys how it really is and all the nitty gritty and how much work it actually takes to shoot one of these. You guys have been so curious. You guys have been DMing me and writing comments about how I need to show you guys how I shoot these. So today, that's what I'm going to prepare for you. Um, but before we start, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification button so the next time I post, you will know straight away. And let's begin. So I've already done my lashes and my foundation, but I'll share with you some of the products that I used. Um, so first is Smashbox's Primerizer. It has a mix of primer and moisturizer, but I always do this right before I start my makeup because I have very dry skin. And then next is the Foundation Primer by Laura Mercier. I just love that like flawless airbrushed finish because I am doing portraits of my own face. And then this is Bobbi Brown's Long Wear Weightless Foundation. I need something that I know is going to stay put. I like that it's more on the matte side, so that's a good one. And I have Tony Moly's Timeless Carrot Concealer for just blemishes, etc. I think today I will try this highlighter palette, which I adore. This one's by Charlotte Tilbury. It looks like gold carrots. None of these products are sponsoring me, by the way. They're literally products that I use on the daily, and I love them. You see that? What I like about Charlotte Tilbury's highlighters is they come off very natural. It's not like some like harsh strobe on your cheekbones or on your, your bridge of your nose. All right, and then not too much, just a little bit of contouring. This is also by Charlotte Tilbury. I use it so much. It's the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. I'm going to use this side for the contouring. Just bring in my cheekbones just a little bit. And then next, I put the Glowing Pretty Skin Palette and I'm going to use the blush in the middle, the pretty blush and the summer blush. I like to put my blush more in the center going across so like when you smile where it pops out the apples of your cheeks i don't go all the way to the edge i go maybe that much that much you see that all right and then next the two palettes that I'm going to be using today is Natasha Denona's Lila palette and NYX's Ultimate Shadow palette. So I'm going to start with this brush and use the yellow. I'm doing it across the main, like, just the whole area, really, but mainly the center. Next, with more of a rounded brush like this, I'm going to use this pink color and go in the middle, right on the sides of my nose. Do it again, but on the edges. And then use the big rounded brush to blend it out. And I'm going to go to the Lila one and use this hot pink color, which is mag magentic or my, mag yeah, magentic. <laughs> right, I'm going to blend it out. I actually think I'm going to go a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going to redo it again, but I'm going to actually increase this out more. I think it'll really look nice. If I go under my eye, right there on the corner, and blend it out way past that eyebrow line. 
And now that the pink kind of um, overpowers the yellow, I'm going to go back and retouch the yellow so it pops more. And that's it for the eyes. Next, I'm going to do my eyebrows and fill them in because you can see I don't have a lot of eyebrow hair. This is the e.l.f. eyebrow kit in the color medium. Just filling in those sparse areas and extending my eyebrows a little bit longer than they really are. And when you extend it further out, it'll help to kind of open your eyes as well. Such a huge difference, right? Having eyebrows and not having eyebrows. Use this color in Juno. Do those corners. Blend it out. For the lipstick, I use this. I don't know the color, the color, so I'm gonna link it down below. But it doesn't say on this actual packaging. This is one of the Christian Louboutin lipsticks that are just so beautiful. And that's the makeup look. Don't mind my face while we're in phase two. Um, now we are about to do the floral arrangement. And this month is this lily, which is so beautiful. And basically, for the concept that I have today, I'm going to have this huge floral bouquet on top of my head. And how I'm going to achieve that is I bought this floral foam. This one's from Oasis. I got it from Amazon. I'll link everything down below and I'm basically going to put it on my head with like some sort of ribbon to keep it in place but I shaved it so that there's a bit of a curve so it sits on the head a little bit more snugly. It's not a perfect shape but at least it has that curve. But now I'm going to start putting um, flowers in it. Alright, so I'm going to take these flowers that I got from Trader Joe's. I'm going to find the ones that are already somewhat in bloom. And I'm going to keep the leaves on. I think this one's really nice. I'm going to put it at an angle like that. So if this is the front, you'll see that. It's a good thing that I have this hoodie on. Alright, so I put some like felt string through the middle of it. I'm going to tie it under my chin and behind my ears. Here's to not messing up. Okay, I might tuck this away. We shall see. Just touching up some areas, I want to move them just a little bit. If there's any like empty areas that you want a little bit more full. I think I got it to a place where I like it. So this is what it looks like on. This thing is so heavy by the way. There's my photo backdrop. Bathroom door, just to show you, I literally am in my bedroom. I need to set up my camera, my tripod right in front of this and I'll literally be sitting on that pillow and taking shots with my remote control. All right, and this is how I'm going to start shooting. I just have um, tights, a bra on, but I'm shooting shoulder up so you can't see me anyways. Um, I have a remote control that I'm going to use to click every single time I want to take the shot so it's already set to remote control mode, my camera. And then in terms of posing, you just want to just keep moving around. Um, some things that I like to do is to 
touch my face, cover an eye, and you just keep moving. And then meanwhile, make sure that you have in the other hand, or honestly, I use my foot so many times to press the button as well, but you just keep moving around. So if you have both hands, you can use your foot. And you can do the backside, you can do closer up portrait, but yeah, just play with it. And another thing that I like to do is you can have props. So if you're taking portraiture, it's fun to play with depth. So you can have leaves in the foreground and just hold it up and use the remote control so it kind of covers your face. But this is going to be cropped up really close so you don't really see that I'm actually holding these branches, but you'll see the leaves and it kind of gives you that sense of being in the jungle, for instance, and it gives you that nice depth. So the flowers, the leaves um, will be out of focus, the flowers on my head and my face could be in focus, for instance, or you can switch it up. But yeah, play with props, play with your hands, touch inanimate objects, touch your face, your headpiece, um, your body. There's so many things you can do, but never stop moving. I think that people get so stuck with like, they have to have an idea before they pose. But honestly, I think you find poses as you keep moving. When your body is feeling a little bit more loose, you, you just naturally start doing things with your hands, with your arms and your body. But when you think, oh, what's the next pose? It's really hard to think of a pose when you do it that way. Like I said before, if you have a Pinterest board of like a lot of cool poses that you want to emulate, it's a great way to start. Like I had to start that way because I was so shy in front of the camera. Even with myself, even when there's nobody in the room, I was shy because I just felt so awkward. But I think the trick is to just just, just treat it like this is your everyday. I wear headpieces all the time. Like just act like this is just your normal routine. And as you do that, you'll get more and more confident every time you shoot. And I think it's all about that. It's not about, not just about like becoming more of a creative person. It's also becoming more confident in your ideas and who you are and what you want to say and bring out to the world. So yeah, I hope you guys like those tips. Just some photography tips that I wanted to share about the process. This backdrop um, is a paper backdrop for photography. It comes in a lot of different colorways and I'll link it down below, but by all means, you don't have to buy anything. You can find a really cool wall or graffiti outdoors or go out into nature. Like the world's your oyster. You don't have to spend money by any means. And then next, if you are using live props like flowers, just remember to be as quick as possible. I think I spent 30 minutes doing the photo shoot and during the photo shoot these guys were wilting, petals started falling off. I don't know if you see all these pollen stains. My hand is yellow from all this pollen that's literally just wafting into the air right now. But yeah, try to be as quick and efficient as possible when you have flowers. And next, in terms of photo shoots, it's really good to plan in advance. So I like to create mood boards. So I'll go into Pinterest, for example, and create my own little group board. And it can be all the images, whether it's locations, color schemes, really cool poses, or really cool flowers, or just anything that like um, helps to set the mood and give you ideas about what to do. And it just helps you before you shoot, so you can have a really good idea and basis, so you're not just kind of winging it. Um, some people love to wing it, and if that's you, by all means do that too. But yeah, you will be able to see the final images on my Instagram. It's at It's Anchovy. And then the hashtag I use to tag all of my flower portrait series is hashtag Anchovy X Flower OTM, which stands for Flower of the Month. So yeah, if you guys are inspired to do your own flower photography, by all means, do that hashtag and tag me so that I can reshare your photos. It would be an honor, honestly, if, if you would do that. And the idea that I can inspire you to be creative is, 
it just makes me so happy. At the end of the day, the reason I do these behind the scenes um, videos is to inspire you that you don't have to be a professional photographer or professional artist. You can be like me, shooting in your bedroom or your bathroom or your living room um, as a one person team or with your friend and create artwork. It's, it really doesn't take anything if, it, if you have the ability to click um, a button on your camera and an idea and a camera, that's all you need. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you guys have any requests or suggestions for shoot ideas that you'd like me to do, please um, leave them in the comments below as well. I'd love to be inspired to um, do the next shoot that you guys um, would love to see. And don't forget to subscribe and um, click that notification button. And most importantly, if you could like this video, it'll show me that this is the type of video that you guys want to see. I can't wait um, for you guys to see this video. And until next time, bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching.